All right, mi amigos, the, uh, the the day has come. The life life is good now. I did not get scammed by the Risk 5 people. <laughs> not that I expected to. But, yeah, so what's important, though, right? What, what, what we're going to discuss very briefly. I'm going to link an Explaining Computers video, and I think maybe a Jeff Geely, whatever his name is, video. Because they will explain in a more simplified way not simplified but in a more probably accurate way <laughs> than i can because i'm pretty new to this stuff you know i had to do a lot of reading on risk 5 to see what what was up with it you know what was the point <laughs> and really so when i applied for this board what i did was i said okay they need hardware testers this is hardware nobody owns i need to get on this so that i can write documentation test gen to get a give it everything working cuz you know it's just new hardware. It's an alt arch. It's something that I want to get working. So, Risk Five though is very interesting compared to ARM, right? Because ARM, while it's pretty cool and you can make open hardware with it, the CPU itself has issues with licensing. Um, what explaining computers will tell you is that's kind of spooked everybody a bit, you know, because having these proprietary uh the proprietary cpus even if the hardware is open you know it, it can cause issues especially if you're living like in china or russia or something where a lot of these countries you know they might not have the best trade deals with other countries you know and that was why the risk 5 international is international now because the u.s was starting to ban you know countries from trade and they were starting to put embargoes and quotas or not quotas um like trade restrictions on again especially china russia and so risk 5 being an open standard developed in berkeley uh they they moved to switzerland uh risk 5 international did and because of that, they are no longer restricted by U.S. trade agreements, which is, has really screwed over companies like Huawei, who are having to rewrite everything from basically from scratch for, for everything they need, all their infrastructure and everything. So Linux is becoming more popular, but RISC-V being an open standard, not to be confused with open source, because it is technically open, but you don't usually see like hardware collaboration being done like you, you don't have like an open source cpu basically that, that usually doesn't happen so there's different implementations of risk 5 and there's what's in, what's useful about it though is it's extensible so you're able to build your own chips based on what you need on your on your chip you know and because of this it it has become very popular in especially China, who would really like an open standard. Uh, so they have picked... Oh, I'm sorry. So they have picked RISC-V as their, as their CPU they're going to develop, you know? And so because of that, most of the products you're going to see coming out are probably from China, which is cool. You know, they can... As the hardware gets better, as the chips get better, as performance gets better, you will likely see it compete with something like Raspberry Pi, you know, or whatever other ARM stuff is out. I don't know about, like, Snapdragon Elite anytime soon, but Risk 5 seems to be about where ARM was five years ago in terms of, like, vendor support, and that's really the key here, uh, is ARM doesn't really care about vendor support. They're, they just kind of expect it'll happen, and they have written a good few tool chains for cross-compiling, which is important because RISC-V is actually using those tool chains to cross-compile for them, you know. But unlike ARM, they seem to they seem to give a shit about like having software support, and because of that, they are developing at a much more rapid pace, uh, especially in terms of what software is available. Where ARM just didn't have that luxury. So why why open standard you know what's cool about that and as we get into libra hardware while risk 5 is technically public domain i'm not sure about the licensing of the chip itself but you do have the option to put your risk 5 computers spc schematics whatever into the public domain and while that's an option it does it is at least an option which means while we couldn't really have fully libra 
x86 64 stuff that just isn't it, it's not really possible because the cpu itself isn't libra you know uh you do have on arm because they're still proprietary i don't know I don't really know how their chip development works, but supposedly you can make fully Libra hardware on ARM, which is cool. So RISC V, though, now you also have what can be a Libra CPU along with it, where you're not paying any license fees here. It's completely open, you know what I mean? Which is really nice, because that means that the problem with, like, RYF certification respects your freedom is that it's really hard to attain that. Uh, especially with current hardware what's available on the market and even then the certification itself is kind of a touchy subject but the problem with it though is oh uh, what would it be um is that you can't get fully libra hardware out of what's on the market so risk 5 aims to well I, I doubt it's like really a goal of theirs is to have like fully freedom respecting hardware but it is possible to attain if you design the board yourself. And I think that's going to be important as... Oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say. Was old hardware tends to be what RYF recommends. Uh, like, I think the only real desktop motherboard they have is a freaking Power. Like Power 9, I think, motherboard. And it costs like $5,000 It's in, for like a 4-core. I was like, holy shit. So, um, but the, uh, but RISC V being new hardware, as it develops, will be, you can potentially make Libra boards out of it, and that means stuff like Frameworks RISC V laptop could potentially, if they really wanted to, because Framework has had, they've tried to get RYF certification, but they weren't able to get it because the certification really doesn't make sense. Their hardware is still freaking Libra, but it's not it's not according to their specification. And I think it had something to do with like loading GPU drivers or something. I can't even remember. But something about that might have been the Pine Phone. So now the now that RISC V is becoming more more available and more useful, we will probably start seeing uh, fully Libra computers made on this architecture, which I think is a good thing. You know, having new hardware that isn't burdened by like Intel and AMD or ARM, you know, where they're able to make what they need to and they can make it exactly to their own specification without worrying about license agreements because ARM is also like that. You know, you, you can only do so much with the hardware because of the way the licensing works and you don't want to like cross paths with somebody else, you know, uh, using different components and it's a problem. So hopefully this works out, you know, I, my board that I've got right now is basically going to be e-waste in the next few years and I'm perfectly okay with that because I got it more as like a development board, you know, it's not, this isn't supposed to be like a super high end, like a spy PC or something. This is something for me to test and dick around with really so um if you haven't seen that video i'll link to the risk 5 international in the description again in case you're interested and i'm hoping i'm hoping that i can get i can get something good out of this you know i don't know about making too many videos on it because everybody's like reviewed risk 5 boards to death you know it's just it's not important <laughs> for me to for me to do that uh, I did plug it into a 4K60 display, and other than being a bit laggy, it does seem to work. So that's cool. I've got it hooked up to a KVM, and if you need to, I can probably link my KVM in the description too, in case you're interested in that, because it is a nice one, and it's reasonably cheap. But I, I, I game on mine, so like I'm playing video games, and I'm constantly typing and listening to music, and I've got my keyboard, my mouse wireless adapter, and my uh usb dac hooked up to it and i don't notice any problems with it at all so i'm gonna get started on gen 2 on this thing eventually that'll be fun i gotta add myself to the list of people that own hardware now because i'm the first person that can write that they have a lychee pi 4a and uh yeah it's interesting stuff so that's really all i wanted to talk about thanks